हेलो फ्रेंड्स फ्रॉम नाउ ऑन इन अ सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स आई शैल बी स्पीकिंग टू यू अबाउट अ वेरी वेरी कॉमन एंड चैलेंजिंग यूरोलॉजिकल टॉपिक एंड दैट इज पोस्ट पैलिक फ्रैक्चर यूरोथर इंजरीज द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ दीज इंजरीज एंड हाउ डू यू प्लान द ट्रीटमेंट ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ रेडियोग्राफिक फाइंडिंग्स so in that series before we i start talking to you about the diagnosis making and treatment plan let me first highlight to you some important surgical anatomical aspects of this problem and how does this problem happen this is the arrangement of the bladder prostate and urethra the low urinary tract within the pelvis so you have important pelvic landmarks such as the pubic bone and then you have the two tuboprostatic ligaments shown here with the gray one here and one on the other side and then you have a musculo tendinous structure called urogenital diaphragm so these are important structures related to the pelvis and then these are the urinary tract structures the prostatic urethra as you can see here the membranous urethra the one which is traversing within the urogenital diaphragm and the bulbar urethra which is below the urogenital diaphragm this is fixed in the perineum and this is mobile in the pelvis and this mobility is restricted because of attachment of tuboprostatic ligaments this is the normal arrangement in a patient of pelvic fracture depending upon the degree of pelvic fracture depending upon the quantum of trauma that happens and at that time whatever aberrations happen in the local anatomy because of the impact you get A variety of low urinary tract injuries. This is the normal pelvis, and uh, in a plain film, you would be able to see this pubic symphysis, the sacral bone, and all that stuff, pubic bones, ischial bones, rami. The commonest injury which you have is when somebody falls, something falls on the lower abdomen. and there is a lateral push on both sides so there is separation of pubic symphysis and you get some degree of opening up of sacroiliac joints now when you see this plain film you will obviously see bony landmarks and you can therefore decipher about fractures and displacements you can see some joints but please also remember about these two ligaments which is very vital and if the impact is more severe you can have some disruption of these ligaments and the joint has opened and the iliac lumbar ligament also get distorted if you have more injury and you have higher degree of diastasis there is a greater degree of separation of these ligaments greater separation of this joint this also gets torn and on the contralateral side this ligament is getting strained because of the rotational effect in this patient because the the now the impact is you know in this direction below up there occurs fracture of ischial ramus and pubic ramus sprain in this ligament and some fracture in the sacrum and you can have a similar thing on the other side two fractures here sprain in the ligaments open sacroiliac joint you can have such bilateral injuries one side ligament torn one side ligament strained greater injury on this joint lesser injury on this joint another example of more severe injury so the point i am trying to tell you here with the help of these illustrations is that you can have any amount of displacement fractures in the pelvis which will depend upon the quantum of injury and when the injury occurs this the prostate which is attached with the help of your prostatic ligaments to the pubic bone and when there occurs inward pressure this bone get displaced inwards and with the pubic prostatic ligament the prostate also goes upwards resulting into a stretch in the urethra 
more movement inwards, more stretch. And this stretch may result into shearing of the urethra at a point. Now this is a magnified view of the bladder, prostate, prostatic urethra, urogenital diaphragm and the bulbar urethra below. With the help of these illustrations, I want to tell you something which is very important for you to understand. When uh, we were taught this subject 30 years ago or maybe even more, the, our textbook Bailey Love mentioned that when the trauma occurs and the prostate gets displaced inwards because of pure prostatic ligament, the prostate is torn from the urethra like an apple from the tree. And this example given, prostate plugged off. And then it was said that the disruption of urethra happens at the level of prostatic apex and therefore it is supralevator. There it, it is above the urogenital diaphragm. So the level of injury was at this point. But when we saw more of these patients, we treated more of these patients, we found completely opposite. We found that in over 90% of patients, the disruption of the urethra is in the proximal most part of the bulb, below the urogenital diaphragm, not above the urogenital diaphragm. And why does this happen? If you see this diagram here, this is the urethra going all along, the wall of the urethra. And within the wall of urethra, there are some longitudinal elastic fibers which begin from bladder neck, run all along the prostatic urethra and they descend down up to a variable limits in different patients. In some patients, they may finish at the level of prostatomembranous junction like here. If you see here, in this animation, the elastic fibers are beginning from here and they are finishing just above the urogenital diaphragm. It is possible that in either patient, these longitudinal elastic fibers come very low down up to the proximal bulb. And in either patient, they may come even much low down. So when the shear happens and the urethra is to disrupt, it will disrupt at the end where these elastic fibers are finishing. So what will happen in a patient where these fibers are finishing above the urogenital diaphragm, the distraction will result into shearing at this point, the classical type which was taught in the old times. But if the fibers are going low down in the prostatic urethra and up down into the proximal bulbar urethra, the disruption will happen here. And if fibers are going very low down, the disruption will happen here. So you will notice that instead of this disruption, it is more common to have disruption here below the urogenital diaphragm and then in some patients even some proximal bulb is also visible. And this largely depends upon how far down the elastic fibers within the wall of urethra have come down. In my personal experience, I have seen this kind of classical disruption happening in only less than 10% of patients. In majority of patients, either this or this happens. Now, here is the case where the disruption has happened below the urogenital diaphragm and this will result in immediately a hematoma formation and this will go down through the urethra and patient will have bleeding from the external urinary meatus. This is the classical sign of the urethral injury, triad. Bleeding at the urethral meatus, a perineal hematoma and patient in a state of urinary retention. This is a triad of post pelvic fracture urethral injury. When some time passes, because there are a lot of fascial structures in the perineum, the hematoma does not expand more. It remains a small hematoma and get tight compression, the bleeding stops. And then after some time, this hematoma changes its character from blood, it becomes more like serum and gets gradually absorbed. And as it gets absorbed, the two ends will come closer, as you can see here, they'll come closer. But if because of the back trauma, the disruption occurs and this is the urogenital diaphragm. Disruption happens above the urogenital diaphragm. Now here, you don't have too many of fibrous structures. There's a loose areolar tissue. So hematoma can become really large. Supralevator or supraurogenital diaphragm, you can have really big hematomas. This is the hematoma beginning and then this is a big hematoma 
and the prostate now sits over the hematoma and gets higher and higher. Often, one of the two prostate ligaments are also torn. And then, once the hematoma stops, then in few weeks' time, the hematoma gradually dissolves and this blood becomes darker, denser and now replaced by a serum and then it gets absorbed and then the two ends can come closer. But in some unfortunate patients, this hematoma can stay big and this hematoma it is seen here in the insect. What you can get is you develop some you know capsule around this hematoma and a cavity kind of structure forms. And a cavity forms in this cavity, you can have infection and abscess formation. This is abscess formation shown here diagrammatically. In some patients, because of the greater tilt of the prostatic urethra and injury to the anterior wall of rectum, patients develop urethrorectal fistula also. This also happens in some patients. So friends, you can have a huge variety in terms of how much the injury that has occurred that has been inflicted on the lower urinary tract. And for diagnosis making of that injury, you need two radiographic tests. One is retrograde urethrogram, where is you put contrast from the external urinimeters. This blue is the opacification of the urethra. And then you put contrast from the superbubic catheter and ask the patient to avoid. And then this is MCUG. So these two tests may be required to quantify the degree of injury to the low urinary tract. So thank you very much. I hope you've understood the key difference in the, the site of injury, above the urogenital diaphragm, how does it progress, and below the urogenital diaphragm, how does it progress. So thank you very much for being with me. In case you have any questions or comments, please write on my email.